many students actually have a problem trying to understand what the volume of distribution really is. The trick here is to understand that it is not a real physical volume that we are talking about, but it's merely a volume factor that converts the administered amount of a drug to the measurable concentration of the drug before any elimination of the drug has taken place. The following analogy will actually help you understand this better. Now imagine there's a young man, Mr. Tan, who had recently inherited a very funny and oddly shaped shopping mall. He needed to know the floor area of the mall, but he couldn't find any of its floor plans because it was so old. So he devised a very ingenious method in estimating its floor area. What he did was he brought 500 students to the mall who were all wearing very bright yellow university t-shirts and he allowed them to be distributed throughout the mall. Next, he stationed himself in the atrium of the mall, which he can easily measure to be about 1,000 square meters in size. And then, he made the simple head count of the number of students that he could see present in the mall. When he was in the atrium of the mall, he observed an average of about 5 students present there. And since the atrium is 1,000 square meters, he reasoned that the 500 students would have been accommodated in approximately 100 times 1,000 square meters. And therefore, he estimated that the mall was approximately 100,000 square meters. To be more certain about his data, he repeated the experiment over the next two weeks. The following week, however, he observed an average of only one student in the atrium. This led him to estimate the mall to be 500 times 1,000 square meters or 500,000 square meters. And then the week after that, he observed 20 students in the atrium. And this led him to estimate the size of the mall to be only 25,000 square meters. So what's happening? Mr. Tan realized that he had assumed wrongly that the students had distributed evenly throughout the mall. His method for estimating the size of the mall would only be accurate if the atrium accurately represented every other part of the sprawling mall. This, unfortunately, was not true. On the first two occasions, there were attractive sales and promotions which drew many of the students away from the atrium and corridors into the smaller shops. On the second occasion particularly, there were two large and very attractive promotions in the shops. On these occasions, there were relatively few students in the mall, leading perhaps to an overestimate of the mall size. On the third occasion, however, there happened to be a food fair in the atrium, this resulted in an extraordinarily high presence of students in the atrium and consequently an underestimate of the mall size. Now in pharmacokinetics, the understanding of the volume of distribution is pretty much the equivalent of Mr. Tan's estimate of the mall size. The observed drug concentration immediately after intravenous dosing may be used to estimate the total volume into which the administered drug distributes. Now it's important to realize that this actually does not indicate the physical volume of the body as it makes the assumption that the drug is evenly distributed throughout the body and that the plasma accurately represents every other part of the body. This clearly is not true as the drug will distribute differentially into cells, tissues and organs. Thus, the volume of distribution will be large if the drug has a higher affinity for tissues than plasma. Conversely, the volume of distribution will be small if the drug has a higher affinity for plasma than tissues.